everyone, and welcome to another segment of TR's Take. Uh, earlier, we had some discussions on grit, and today uh, we want to continue that conversation with uh, uh, one of our alumni, uh, Kim Fagan. Uh, Kim ran uh, cross country for us here at Eckert, and when I was discussing this topic and uh, I showed you all the, the book grit, um, she was the first uh, student athlete to come to mind because of everything uh, she did while she was here, and then from what I followed, what she's done since she's left here. Uh, Kim is a 1992 grad of Eckert. She won two Sunshine State Conference individual uh, awards uh, for cross country. Uh, she also won two regional championships um, and was uh, recognized as an All-American in 1992. Uh, she went on to become a physician for the United States Navy and is currently a pediatric radiologist. Welcome, Kim. Hi. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Tom. This is great. And uh, and like I, Kim and I talked a little while ago, I didn't realize she was back in uh, St. Petersburg and she was a Gibbs High School graduate and now she's come back and we're really excited to have her here. So uh, uh, we're going to kick it, kick it off right away, Kim. I'm going to give you that first question. Um, talk about your time at Eckert and how, how grit was a factor both athletically and academically for you and your success. Okay. Well, um, I, I felt like, like for most of my life up until Ecker College, I, um, I mean, I studied and I worked hard to get my goals, but I mean, it just kind of came naturally, but then I started Eckerd and I was in, um, calculus two, and that was my first challenging class with some C's in the first parts of the, the career here. And, um, it was pretty scary because I was like, oh gosh, I, I don't want to get C's. Not that there's anything wrong with being average, but I want had I had I high aspirations for myself. Um, so I went to the teacher and he, you know, helped me through. I, I studied every day and just took it one day at a time and said, I I know I can do it. He said, if you get an A on the exam, you'll I'll give you an A for the class. So I just took one day at a time and studied my best and I managed to do it. So, I mean, that was my, not that, you know, running track and cross country in high school didn't get me through to grit, kind of a grit type of situation, but that was my first academic experience with facing that I'm going to have to study a little harder and work really diligently to get what I want out of this class. Yeah. That perseverance. I mean, that what, like I said, when I earlier, when I used to watch you run, because I had that privilege, and you know, I I I would break down three miles. That would be about it, and I'd be packing it in. And and just to watch you compete on a on a regular basis, um, do you think that 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 drive, that perseverance, that grit comes from mental, or is it more a physical? Like like you just built yourself up physically. Which one do you think, uh, or both? What what do you think about that? Is it mental, physical? Well, I think it's a combination because if I didn't have running, running has helped me so much in my life. And I'm so thankful I was able to start it in high school, thanks to a PE teacher telling me to go run a mile and see what I how I did. And they're like, oh, you should go for the track team. I cannot thank that PE teacher enough because running has been just the the foundation of my strength. And anytime I go through a hard time, I can always go out for a run or any type of exercise. And it doesn't matter how terrible the workout is or was, uh, I still feel great and gives me motivation to move on and, you know, sit down, buckle down and let's go, let's do the next step. What's what's going on? What do we got to do now? So. That's great. Yeah, I talked <laughs> about that. We talked about a little bit about how having passion for something obviously makes it, makes us, it's easier to persevere when you have a strong passion for something. And that kind of, you, it, what it sounded like to me is that, that running that you got, that passion it got from, that helped you in all, a lot of other aspects of your life too, you know, kind of to, to realize or, or to maybe clear your mind and then push forward through with things. Definitely. Um, doing well was definitely a plus because, you know, when you do well, then you get confidence that you can do well and other things, if you just try um, and keep keep up 
the strength and the hard work that you're trying to do. Um, because I mean, I didn't need pats on the back or anything. It just felt good for me. And that's what, you know, what I wanted for my life. And I'm glad I was and did well at it. And I kept practicing to try to do better um, because, you know, we all want to do better and have goals and set goals for ourselves. Like I wanted to make all American and I kept trying all four years. And one year, my first year, I didn't do as well because I had, you know, some other issues I was working through. Um, and, but then, you know, I gradually kept working and had coach Eagleson to help me and give me good workouts. And I trained with the, the men's team and the girls team, and we all supported each other and just having that, um, you know, family to go to, um, and work with, you know, year round was helpful to get you through the other parts of life and doing well together as a team and then both as an individual just made it, you know, all the better to just work to your goals and um, finally making it. <laughs> I, I told you there's, when you, next time you get back to campus, there's some nice banners up in the gym right now. You, you don't like seeing from your team's success going to uh, both conference championships and national championships. Now, so how did you take your grit and the stuff you went through to college and how did that uh, help you possibly in your medical career when you, when you left us? Uh, well, without getting in too much detail, um, I decided a little late to try for medical school. I, I knew I wanted to do something in radiology because I had worked for a hospital um, in the St. Petersburg and I loved radiology. Um, but my first time around or two, I didn't really get into medical school, but I uh -huh. did get a, a scholarship to do radiological health sciences in Colorado. And um, then when I got there, you know, research was just not, it wasn't what I was thinking with radiology. So I had to, you know, do a turnaround and be like, okay, well, I think I really want to go to the medical career. So I'm just going to have to keep doing what I'm doing, but keep applying for medical school and just do a master's here, not a PhD. So I had to, I had a lot of setbacks because I didn't get in again. Um, research and radiological health science um, schooling was fairly challenging. Um, I was happy to get a C in radiation physics <laughs> and I had to like, you have to reset your, your baseline a little bit, which is a little bit humbling and not something that we all want to do, but um, you just have to sometimes figure out where you are with everyone and see where your goals are and just reset from there. But obviously you, in, you said when you did the one thing, it wasn't really what you wanted. So you kind of reset and you went back towards medical schools. You must've had that in the back of your mind that, that drove you because, because it, you wind up pushing yourself through it. Yeah. Like, um, at first you don't succeed, try, try again. You know, that was, that was a big motto in my life so far um, because I knew, I knew where I wanted to go and I had to take a couple of side trips along my way to get there, but I still, I still managed to get there and I'm very grateful for it. And the same thing happened when I was applying for radiology, I, I got to medical school, I got that step. Um, but then you have to, you know, get your residency, you have to apply for that. And residency then was very challenging to get to. So it took me a couple of times to, you know, I didn't want to go and do in a couple of more years, I wanted to get right into residency, but I had to do my little passage of time. And then I finally worked toward it and got was able to achieve my goal. So <laughs> And I'm very happy where I am now. I'm, I love being a pediatric radiologist. It's a, um, an amazing job and I look forward to it every day. And that's, I think that's what everyone shoots for in life to find a job that they're gonna be happy with um, throughout their life. Well, that, you know, that when we, when I was coaching we would call the daily hard work, we'd call it the grind. And mm -hmm. if someone had grit, was gritty and was, was uh, relentless inside, you know, those, the, the day, daily grind was not anything for them. They just did it because that's what they wanted. Cause the end result, like you were talking about was what they really had their mind set on. So um, it sounded like you somewhere in there, you knew what you wanted, even though you had to bounce around and do a few other things to get there, you, you got your end result. So that that's great. 
Um, <laughs> the, the next part, the next part is, is there, well, you kind of brought up some, but is there one thing where you had to, your grit had to come through to, to get you through a level? I know you just talked about a bunch of different things, but is there one time that in all the Eckerd or running or, or medical school that you just said that was the time where you really dug deep and, and it got you through something? Mm, that's a heavy question. Um, Cause I feel like there's a couple of places in life that you go through those sections. Um, I think a couple of uh, one or two is like when you get, you apply to medical school or you apply for that next step that you're looking for. And then you get letters that say, no, I'm sorry, we, we can't accept you. So that's a, that's a huge letdown. How do you move on from there? Um, well, it's hard, but you have to just pull up your pants. There's other stuff going on. You have to focus on, you focus on the present. Then you, you can't worry about the past. You got to focus on the present to shoot for the, the future. Right. Um, so I think getting turned down from getting accepted into medical school and then going to your interview the next year and they're asking like, well, how, how have you changed things? What are you doing differently? How can you prove to us that you really want to do medical school? So interviewing wasn't a great strength of mine um, that I had to just be like, I'm not good at, you know, bragging about myself because this is just my life. I just wanted to do what I, what I was doing every day to do well or whatever I needed to do. Um, so I just said, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing this. And you have to really like come out of your shell and tell these people that this is what I really want. I'm, I'm doing this and this and this. So th those were hard stages for me. So I had to like, you know, it wasn't like, you know, like, she talks about in the grit book that, you know, she gets like things just like people like that get things handed to them and like just feel like everything should come to them easily. That's not the way it is. You have to like, if you're expecting that in life, it's not going to be that way. And the more that you accept that, you're just going to have to keep working towards your goals and take one day at a time, um, but plan ahead as well. It's going to be better for you to get your goals. It's, it's that vision that you're looking for, that the light at the end and, and how we talked about in one of my other talks, resilience about sometimes, and you mentioned it, you got to step back sometimes and what find a different way to get around it, but you still want to get to that end result. Um, how about with, with, your, with your family? Is there anything that, that you learned over the years um, that you're trying to pass on to your family from, from you know, as far as grit goes and as far as uh, helping them to how do you get to that next level? Well, um, you just have to um, trust in yourself, be confident. Um, if you really want it, you can tell you can get it. I tell my son Grant all the time that um, your mind is a powerful thing. You can let it bring you down or you can let it build you up and go out there and get it, you know, because things aren't going to come to you. If you want it, you got to go get it and you have to, you know, just be confident, but not too cocky, right? You have to still be humble because, you know, you don't want to come off as insincere or, you know, kind of like Arrogant. stuck on yourself yeah. kind of thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so I tell my son all the time, I have, a little gym downstairs and I have these like seven little things that, you know, talk about be yourself, you know, don't let other people think for you. You think for yourself because it's your life. And I'm very strong believer in, you know, you're your worst enemy, but you're your worst friend. You're your best friend too, because you got to learn from your, your mistakes and use them to help strengthen the way you move forward. And hopefully make smarter decisions and, you know, do things better. Uh, the last question, um, talking to all the, the current Tritons here, you know, if, if you have uh, uh, what kind of advice would you give to them just for, you know, whether it's finishing up college or the next steps in their lives, what would be an advice you'd send out to all our Tritons right now? <laughs> well, um, go Tritons, be tough. Um, <laughs> you know, life is meant to be challenging or um, otherwise you wouldn't have motivation to move forward. 
um, learn from your setbacks, be humble, and keep moving forward and try to take one day at a time and learn as much as you can. And then think about a thing you can do better the next day. And um, if you really want it, you can definitely get it. Just keep working hard and you'll get it. <laughs> That's awesome. I really thank you for joining us. And I can't wait till COVID kind of settles down and I can get you back out to campus and show you around a little bit. That would be great. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the honor of you thinking of me for this conversation. Absolutely. And uh, you have a great weekend. Uh, uh, everybody else, uh, stay tuned for our next topic. We'll see what we'll cover next month. Uh, go Tritons.